today. I'm actually going to be speaking with an author, Melanie Benjamin, Hello. the author of the newly published Mistress of the Ritz, is in our office today. And I'm really excited. This is going to be our first this interview. Is, I know. Okay. I'm your virgin. I'm your virgin. <laughs> 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 the book reported virgin. Virgin Kelly. <laughs> I have been a fan of Melanie's for many years. In fact, it did not take me long to go through my shelves and found I find Alice I have been, the aviator's wife, the swans of Fifth Avenue, and Mistress of the Ritz. So that was like so much fun because I'm actually being able to talk to somebody who I've enjoyed their work for so long. Thank you so and these much. are on my bets on shelf and this will be yeah. on my bets on shelf starting next week. Oh, that's so. exciting to know. Thank you so much. I mean I'm a huge fan of Book Reporter, what you guys do. Getting authors and readers together. I mean, that's so important these days, and thank you for all that. Oh, and it's like 23 years. Uh, so now that, that you said that the other day, blew my mind. I couldn't believe Because you're only, what, 25? Yeah, I'm only really. Yeah. I actually, I'm doing 27 this year. Oh, you're doing 27? I'll go to 27. Go to 27. <laughs> so, okay, I have to ask, how did you come about the story of Blanche and Claude Ozella? How did you find the story yeah, that's the root of the book? It's an incredible story about... The Ritz during war, and how it really was kind of, I can't just see it like Casablanca the movie, you know, with all the espionage and intrigue going on all under one place. And I read a book that came out several years ago called Hotel en Place Vendome, which was a nonfiction book about the Ritz during the oh. war. And it told a lot of the different stories and different perspectives, and Blanche and Claude Ozella were in that, both through line and with the main narrative. Sometimes I have gotten my ideas from reading other people's books, and sometimes I will take a small person in, in somebody else's book, and I will think that per I'll research, and I think, well, this person deserves an entire novel to himself, oh. or to herself. And that's why I discovered Blanche and Claude. So, did you go to the Ritz? Did you stay? But I was did. that like a really tough thing to do? I know research. Oh, I know research is bad. Yeah, but I told my husband, I said, "Honey, I'm writing a book in Paris, set at the Ritz." Because we've been to Paris before, but we are definitely Marriott's points. People. Okay, got it. So no bumble with you. <laughs> no, no, we have never stayed at the Ritz. Although I have a whole story I want to tell you about trying to go to the bar Hemingway once and we couldn't get in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We. I thought I had to stay at the Ritz for at least two or three nights of our mm -hmm. stay just to experience just the luxury and the beauty of it. I did get a behind the scenes tour right. of, of some of the suites that I would not have seen otherwise. I mean, we had to take out a second mortgage to do it. To do it, I tried to just get tour. Oh, it was beautiful and it was amazing. And I don't think I could have really done the book justice had I not done it because the book in this is a third character, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, it's place. Yeah. became such a great character. Yeah. What's going on at the Ritz during this time? Okay, so um, the Ritz was always this fabled hotel, opened in 1898. By the 1920s, a man named, a Frenchman named Claude Ozello was the director of the Ritz. He was married to an American woman named Blanche. She was an American flapper who came mm -hmm. to Paris in the 20s. Mm -hmm. And she fell in love with Claude. They moved into the Ritz. As director of the Ritz, he was basically on call 24-7. And so he was running this fabled, iconic hotel that Blanche was having the time of her life. Right. We're hanging around in the bar, drinking with Hemingway and Fitzgerald. It was all glitzy and glamorous and very much fun. And it masked the deep uh, tears in the Ozello marriage. Mm -hmm. That was a very troubled marriage. Right. And then in 1940, when Paris fell mm -hmm. to the Nazis, mm -hmm. I didn't know this part. They commandeered all the luxury hotels. I did not know all no, of them. I, I just started all, this. No, all, all of them. them. That's where they headquartered the high-ranking of Nazi officials who right. were in charge of keeping order in Paris. And the Ritz being the most luxurious of all, that's for Hermann Goering. Okay. He stayed in the Imperial Suite. Right. But the Ritz was different. They allowed the Ritz to stay open half of it. They didn't let that happen at the other hotels. Oh, so, so the Ritz was the only one. So you had in half of the hotel, you had Hermann Goering and the Nazis. The other half, you had Coco Chanel. Chanel. I know, because she moved into the Ritz right before the war to live out the war in luxury. There was a, a famous French film star, Arletti. She also moved into it. And you had spies and Nazis and collaborators with you know, Chanel collaborated with the enemy. And you had resistance people infiltrating the Ritz. And it was all happening all under the same roof. And Blanche and Claude were kind of overseeing it. Right, and they were keeping secrets from each other at yes. the same time, they, they which have, I found so interesting. I just, I'm not going to give it away. No, 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 no. Their marriage was not based on um, honesty. I guess no. you could say no, 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 passion, no. sure, but there was an awful lot they kept from each other. Okay. And they had to serve the enemy. The enemy was the guest. Right. And they had no choice but to cater to the Germans and treat them like guests of the Ritz. 
But Claude was a decorated World War I hero. Mm -hmm. He was a true Frenchman, a patriot. And Blanche also had her own reasons. So they both had to find a way to literally sleep under the same roof with the enemy, treat the enemy as their guest, but find a way to fight back. Right. Right, yeah. And they were both doing different things. Yeah. And I thought that was the most interesting because yeah. one did not know what the other was no, doing. No, no, the secrets that were kept within that marriage. Right, right. And I mean, I think the secrets that were in that marriage already mm -hmm. allowed them both then to go off and do what they had to do. Right. You know, to strike a blow. Right. And allow them, I think, maybe to keep each other innocent of what they were doing. And maybe in that way they were protecting one another. I don't know. I mean, I think the point of the book mm -hmm. is that the marriage... May, was somewhat saved by war because right, ultimately right. they they found out the truth in each other and that it was such a good part of each other that they had hidden from one another for all these years. But on the other hand, I think ultimately it destroyed their marriage. It destroyed I mean, at the same time yeah, because it was what were you doing? What was I doing? Going back and forth, and yeah. were you in conflict with each other? What did right. you both know? I mean, Blanche thought. Claude was, you know, being way too servile to the enemy, right? right? Going out of his way, and she hated that about him, not understanding that there was a reason, there was a method to his madness. Yeah. So when you were researching, did you, okay, so you worried about these characters, yeah. then did you start doing feverish research on them before you started writing, or did you start writing and... Yeah, this one was, not a lot of research was necessary because not a lot is known about either Blanche or Claude. Um, they, they are actual people who lived... Um, well into the 1960s. There was a memoir about Blanche written by mm -hmm. a nephew of hers, I believe. And that's about it. Wow. So about them, there wasn't a lot of research I had to do. About Paris during the war, sure, there was. A there was but and the hotel. And the hotel, hotel during the war. Right. But again, that's fairly easy research to, to do. I read a lot of now, mysteries. If you're writing and you get stuck, like, uh, I don't know if there were 17 steps or 16 uh, or something like that, do you just leave blank space and keep on going, or do you stop research? No, I usually stop and research. Okay. It has to be something big enough, like 17 steps or 16 steps. I don't care about You know, you just say they took the steps. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, all right. All right. All right. I learned long ago when I wrote Alice I Had Been and I didn't have the money to go to Oxford to research. Uh, and I did get kind of caught up in one of those silly details. It was about whether Alice would step up or step down to mm -hmm. go to a garden. And I realized if the reader was that caught up in those details, I wasn't doing a good job as a storyteller. Okay. So I kind of learned to let go of some of that and concentrate on the stories and the characters. But yeah, I will occasionally have to stop and research. And I'm pretty disciplined. I don't let it send me down. The rabbit, the rabbit hole. I know a lot of authors kind of get caught up in that. I, I'm pretty good about, well, I found out what I need to know, now get back to the writing. Some enjoy the research so much about yeah. the writing. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, writing is hard. I'm the, yeah, and I'm kind of the opposite. I like research, but I don't... I always been like a month or so in research. It's much less than most people think. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So how about Chanel? Did you do a lot of research on her just because she is a character in the book? She is. And you know, a lot of that, I kind of just played with Chanel and made her my own. Okay. I knew I wasn't real fond of her activities during the war, and that's all very easily found Dog out. And yeah. fairly recent knowledge mm -hmm. of what she was actually up to during the war. And it was up to no good, basically. Right. And... And so I thought, okay, I'll make her... I thought she and Blanche could be good adversaries to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, I think they were both great characters. So I kind of... That was my kind of interpretation of and, Chanel. And there was the fashion part of it, too. Because Blanche had her own look as well. She had her own look and her own style. Yeah. So this is not like some little waif that was hanging out in the hotel. No, no, Blanche was, was broad. She, I mean, I don't... I mean, I mean, like, she was a gutsy broad, right? You yeah. Know? So she wasn't starving herself to fit into Chanel's no, no, little no. jersey dresses, you no. know? She had her own favorites. Yeah, I don't think Chanel and Blanche got on all that well. Such an interesting time, though, because so much has been written about World War II. Yeah. We're talking about this at my book group last night, yeah. and having read too much about World War II, and then there's a new angle that comes and, out yeah. that you haven't thought about before. No. You don't know that story. And I think that's why we are, there are, look, I know, I started writing this book two and a half years ago. Wow. Did not know that this year would be the year of 50 billion books about women in World War II. You, know, right. you never know that before your book comes out. But yeah, mine's the only one set the Brits. Okay. And I think that's why we still write about World War II, because we still are uncovering all these aspects to it. You know, I mean, certain aspects have been covered thoroughly. Right. But certain things we're just now finding out. Right. And what happened at the Brits? 
Yeah, that's, did a, not, that's a, most. That's, I've never heard of that. And I started researching after I read the book. Started reading, and there was very little yeah. about what was going on. Right. So right. it was a, a pleasure to have sat there and said, "Oh wait, this is something completely different. Something right. I hadn't been thinking through at you all." You know, one thing I discovered at the research of this, going to Paris and talking to people, still today there's a very complicated legacy mm -hmm. in France about the, the Nazi occupation. Oh, okay. They don't like to talk about it, right? Because right. their their army. You know, gave way so so early. It was destroyed so early. They had to live with the enemy. You know, in a way that I, there's shame attached to the memories of the occupation today because it was happened so early in the war. Yeah, and, and it lasted for so long. Four years, yeah. and and the Allies were the ones who landed on Normandy to you know take back Paris. Not the French army so much. They were there, but right. it was the Allies that they needed. Um, there was resistance certainly, and there's that's a part of my book, but it's not. Quite as widespread as I think people want to remember it as, especially living in Paris. Yes, yeah, in Paris, Paris. Yeah. in the countryside, I think you're more hearing about south, it more yeah. and hearing about it more. But, but Paris, not, I think, you know, had more soldiers. You know, they were there, right? It right. was a little harder. And I think they were just so stunned at seeing their beautiful city in the hands of the Germans that for a long time they didn't really want to deal with that legacy. Right. Mm -hmm. So the ending of the book, there's it's tragedy. And it's very well known, like what happened with Blanche and Claude. I don't or know. Not. Don't, don't say. Don't I'm not going to say. say. Don't say. But it was hard to write. It was. I was going to ask. Was yeah. that difficult to write? And yeah. did, knowing that at the end of what happens, did that in, infuse as you were writing throughout the entire book? Because sure. You knew the end. Yeah, I knew the end. I knew right. exactly how it was going to end. Although I did not know how I was going to handle it. Uh -huh. uh, for people who've read my books before, this is new. You know, mm -hmm. how this book ends is unlike any book I've written. Spoiler alert or not, I mean, read it because <laughs> uh, it took my editor and I quite a while working with that ending okay. to get it right. Because the readers said, of my books it were not used to this. Stunt. Yeah, I was absolutely stunned. Yeah. But then when I went and read about it, I saw what yeah. was going on. But the way you handled it was just so well done because Thank you. it was so interesting how fractured their lives had been for so many years. And I think that. We often forget that when the war ended, it didn't go off like a television show. Like no. It didn't show up. It's the repercussions for years, years of what years. was going on. The lack of food for years, the lack of you know whatever that was going on Material. for years. Material. I mean, the Germans just took everything. So, okay. I mean, one of them, the, in, the images I speak of a lot of the book is how uh, all the French citizens had to walk around on wooden sole shoes. Yes. Because yes. all the rubber was taken by... The Germans and the leather and everything, so that clatter, that clatter, and the clatter going down the street, yeah. and also the, the stockings. Like if you wore right. your stockings, right. there were no more stockings, There's and they were yeah. painting a line mm -hmm. on the back of your leg, mm -hmm. which I've read about in other countries, but I didn't. It like well, we did that here, here too, I think. We yeah. it, but somehow yeah. hearing it there, because yeah. I think that I always think of Paris as a place of fashion, sure, and it's a tour and blah blah blah, and to sit there and say, oh, they're walking in wooden shoes with lines at the back of their legs. It was right. well, that's why Christian Joe was such a big deal after the war when he reopened his house and the new mm -hmm. look and all that. And that was a big part of it. But yes, you're right, the legacy of war, um, the wounds that don't heal, mm -hmm. that lasted and haunted Blanche and Claude to the end, end of their days. The end of their days. Yeah. 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 The cover's really good, too. It's beautiful. I, really I think love it. It, just, it just evokes yeah. exactly the right, um, right feeling. And if you like, look down here, the, the, the vehicles going through, the like Apple Power, they're like oh. military vehicles. Oh. So it's like, every it's detail was there. there. Yeah, no, I every really there. love the cover. That well, I this is my color. That's true. We're doing this is our first interview. Yeah. It's my color. Yeah, it Let's is. get real. It is. It's yeah. <laughs> so now you're on tour. You're I am. I mean, the book just came out today. Yeah. This is the 21st, and so I've been in New York doing a couple of pre-events with my publisher, and now I'm off to New Canaan, Connecticut. New Canaan, Connecticut. I've never. I've never been to Connecticut. Can you really? Believe that? Really? I think I've taken a train. Like I took yeah, a yeah. train from here to Boston before, so I'm sure we had to go through there. Right. But I've never like stepped foot in Connecticut. Wow. That's so weird. I don't and know it's like that. a new state. It's like a yeah, new state. Yeah, I am, but all these years, yeah, so I take the box, I take the new state. And then I'll be on tour for about three weeks, so all that information is on my website if anyone yeah. cares to look at my appearances to see if I'm coming near them. No, I definitely do yeah. look, because yeah. people yeah. later on say, Melanie, I didn't know you were here. Oh my gosh, like, so please, please and go to her website, MelanieBenjamin.com. MelanieBenjamin.com, appearances, just see where I am. And I'm really kind of all over through June. Through June. Well, actually, there's some stuff up there for August already. I might come to a city near you.
So here's another question. Book groups. Is there a discussion guide for this book? Yeah, and it site? just got up on my site. Great. Great. It was one of those things we kind of like, oh, forgot to the last minute. And my editor um, was great. She put it together for me because I was like, I have to pack. I can't do this right now. Right, right, she right. was great. She put it together. So it's on my website. And, of course, it will be out with a paperback. And I don't know if you guys ever include Um Actually, we, I have, we do it on, on readinggroupguides.com. Right. We will put the discussion yeah. guides up there. But for me, I think it's going to be such an interesting book for readers to talk yeah. about. Uh, and, and I think there's a lot to, to, to you know go through mm -hmm. and have conversation about. Yeah. And you can also do you know set up um, thinking about like what Paris was like at the time. Well, right. I, I think that'd be really fun. That is kind of fun about this. But I mean, obviously it's a book about war and, mm -hmm. and, and heroism and right. real things that happen. But yet there is the risk. There is the risk. You know, and and part of the book is life before, so you can see the contrast and the, the glamour and the. The cocktails. The cocktails. <laughs> the cocktails. There were totally cocktails at the bar. I think you need a cocktail on your website. Do you have a cocktail? I, you know, I have a cocktail. Cool. cocktail? Um, I'm gonna ha I will do one. The, the Frank Meyer, the bartender of the Ritz, right. he's a major character. In right. this book. He's right. a great character. He wrote a book called, back in the 30s, called, I think it's The Art of Mixing Cocktails. Okay. And it's a small press reprinted it. So you can buy it if you search it online. And I've got that book, and it's got all the cocktails that he you know, did it. at the Ritz. And I did post one. I made one, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and I posted it on Facebook. So once I get back home, yeah, yeah I will definitely I think it'd be like that. different cocktails. I think, uh, actually, I think you need one every night on I tour. Know, oh, I mean, let's get real. Well, I will say, <laughs> it, my cocktail at the Ritz, every night we went to okay. the bar Hemingway when we stayed there, and we had and toasted to Blanche and Claude, and I always had a champagne cocktail. Uh -huh. I love a champagne cocktail. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Paul Heinrich in Casablanca. Every time he goes to Chambly Cocktail, I'm like, oh, he's, I swoon. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm completely there. I know. I, know. There. I, know. I love a good champagne cocktail. Yeah. I think that's easy to get us to create. Yeah. So everyone, champagne cocktails yeah. to celebrate Melanie and her new book. Thank you so much for Thank coming by today. Talk. This was so much fun. And this is our first, and we look forward to doing many more authors from bookreporter.com. Thanks so much for joining us.